this time. Give it everything. It's gonna be so close. This is very tight. I'm going wheel to wheel. I'm going for it. Through goes Hamilton. It's not over yet. Max Verstappen. Champion of the world. Hello, everybody. Good day and good night and good morning. And welcome to the qualifying notebook from the 2024 Australian Grand Prix. Now, I'm about to tell you what happened in qualifying. So if you're waking up Saturday morning and you want to watch the replay because you weren't bonkers enough to get up uh, and join us live at three in the morning or whatever it was, which I don't blame you, but I mean, it's fun, so do it. But uh, I don't blame you if, you if you're watching the replay. Then don't watch the next 23 minutes and 11 seconds um, because I'm about to tell you exactly what happened. OK, so look away now. Well, what a qualifying, what a surprise it was because having been nowhere for the whole weekend, Max Verstappen jumps up and delivers not one but two laps, which are good enough for pole position, stashing Ferrari's hopes that they might be able to be on pole or even both cars on the front row. And it wasn't even the Ferrari that had looked like being on pole that was the closest challenger. Charles Leclerc had, had sw glazed through, gl raced through, glazed through, like a like a like a like a swan-like through Friday, looking like he was the faster Ferrari driver. But it was Carlos Sainz today who gave the biggest threat. Was the biggest threat for Ferrari's prancing horse chances. Just to give you, so that's that's the the uh, the uh, overview of the day. But just to give you a, an idea of what Melbourne is like in 2024. Well, it's buzzing. Um, there's a lot of bird life around. And uh, I do love the Australian bird life. The, we're not we're not talking about the seagulls. They're not the chippy chasers here. There are all sorts of uh, uh, interesting uh, bird life around, which Lee might be able to pick up. And we have a huge crowd here, a huge and in excited crowd who's uh, supporting all sorts of teams, from Aston Martin to Williams to to Red Bull to the New York Yankees. Didn't know they were a team, but uh, uh, I like your Yankees hat. And uh, nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And. It's autumn here. So for us in Europe, who've left uh, the UK and come down here, and it's springtime, and the leaves are just trying to spout from the trees, and uh, hello, and uh, to come here, where, of course, you know, I know the way that physics works and, and seasons, this, you know, it's the seasons, and to see leaves falling from the trees, I mean, not these trees, it's all right, you don't have to do that, um, but, uh, you know, leaves on the, on the ground, because it's autumn here, obviously, that's the way it works in Australia, is a bit odd. And I've gone on about that, but uh, it seems that I'm the only person who finds that a bit odd, that uh, we've gone, we've, you know, what happened to summer? Well, they had summer here in Australia, and it was very hot, hello. Um, so, yeah, it's very, it's, 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 it's a real good feeling atmosphere and i've got to commend the uh, australian grand prix corporation and and and, and the melbourne uh, and the victorian government because they put on an amazing event there are improvements every year you come here there are some people who traveled a long way 10,000 miles from from europe in the uk to be here on holiday i know it's expensive to come here but what a place to come what a place for the race as they've always said around here half a million people i believe hello do we know if the numbers are about half a million? Are they expecting half a million this weekend? Half a million? People? Yeah. 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 Brilliant. True fact. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, I think they're expecting half a million over, over the four days. And the entertainment is packed. Uh, you, from Thursday morning to Sunday evening, you get V8, Aussie supercars, you get F2, F3, Porsches, uh, demonstrations from the Doohan, I was going to say the Doohan brothers, uh, from uh, Mick Doohan and Jack Doohan. So it's really, really uh, a buzz and, uh, and humming, and that's not just the bird life in yonder gum trees, kookaburras, koalas, and kangaroos. Right, talking of wildlife, let's talk about how Max, Ver Max Verstappen did it. I know it's got nothing to do with wildlife, but um, yeah, it's, it's been a difficult day so far. Difficult weekend for Max Verstappen. Now, what was the problem? It seemed to be understeer, and it was a matter of the, getting those front tires, the front of the car. You know we've said it before, Max Verstappen loves a responsive front of the car, and that's what, not what he was getting earlier on in the weekend. Uh, so it's been understeer all week, can't get the front in, but he popped up, there he was, he popped up in Q three and whether it was a, a tweak of the front wing here uh, or there or just the, the circuit characteristics circuit conditions coming to him it was all that Max needed to really BAM in Q3 with a 16-0 two tenths ahead of Carlos Sainz uh, and both his laps uh, were good enough 
in Q3 to be on pole position. Uh, with typical understatement, he said, uh, Max said, well, it was quite a good lap, to be honest, uh, which I thought was quite sweet. But he also called it unexpected, and the car had been particularly tricky. Sergio Perez found that car quite tricky as well. He lost the front left in the last sector on the first run in Q3, but then himself did a very good lap to be, Q to be P3 on the grid, for which they called it a good comeback. A good comeback for Sergio Perez. It hadn't looked like he'd been so down that he needed a comeback throughout the weekend, but he had been down uh, a little bit. Now, what's been going on with the situation? Uh, I'll recap the situation if you don't know uh, what uh, has happened. Um, of course, there was a complaint against the Red Bull boss, uh, Christian Horner. That complaint was dismissed by Red Bull and their uh, KC, their King's Council, as was uh, doing, doing it. The complainant has lodged an appeal of that decision to Red Bull. Uh, so she has uh, appealed that decision. Uh, we believe she's also put in a petition to appeal to the FIA, uh, but eff effectively they're they're still waiting for the de for, for we're, we're still waiting for details on the process and how long uh, it's going to take. We think the Red Bull appeal process will take place before the FIA. And if you're wondering why there's any kind of what what the FIA have to do with all of this, um, Christian Horner is an FIA license holder. That means that he has to uphold the standards of the FIA, the FIA sporting regulations and you know, for per personnel. It's on the website, you can, you can look at it. So that's why uh, there is, uh, there's, there's a, uh, the, the influence or the, the, the relevance of, of the FIA. But just to uh, underline it, the complaint was originally dismissed uh, by Red Bull's process and Christian Horner uh, denies uh, all the allegations against him. But that is what's going on with the situation. So I think what we can say for sure is that the situation, this is not the end of the situation, uh, but there's no new uh, new news beyond the the, the the appeals that have been lodged that I can tell you. Right, let's, I mean, I don't know whether where Christian is. He's been keeping a pretty low profile um, over, the, uh, over the weekend. Uh, so, uh, I mean, the, the Max, is Max happy and does Max want to carry on with Red Bull? Does he still feel that Red Bull beyond 25, 20, 20, 26 is the right place to be? And is he trying to get out of his contract? Different matter. Power struggle between Christian Horner, Helmut Marco, you know, Shalom Uvidia, the Thai side of, of, of Red Bull, the Austrian side, Oliver Mintzlaff of Red Bull. Different matter. So there's all sorts going on and they're not over. But uh, that's the issues. That's what's going on at the moment. Right, Mercedes. Well, I thought it was optimistic, uh, didn't you, uh, for Toto Wolff to say that he still believes, I still believe, I still believe, um, uh, of uh, that the, the, this, the, this car is somehow going to get there. Because clearly, I don't think Lewis Hamilton believes it. I think Lewis Hamilton thinks that it's cursed with the same, you know, bad handling uh, characteristics, especially in the rear of the car, uh, that last year's car and the year ca that the car before it had as well. Because um, clearly this car st is still not right. Toto, when I spoke to him just now, said, I still think we can make it right. Lewis pretty much wrote off this year's World Championship. I know you're going to say to me, uh, yeah, anyone in a Red Bull is not going to win this year's World Championship. All right, I know there are 22 races still to go. And you would say, but Lewis made the point himself that he is now 43 points. After two races, he has eight points and Max has 51. So Lewis, uh, only after two races, is 43 points behind the World Championship leader and so it's not going to be i think in all realistic uh, ways of looking at it that's miles chamley watson by the way the u.s olympic fencer who's uh, uh, a red bull athlete i think he's still a red bull athlete but he's uh, uh, a mate of lewis hamilton's uh, there in the um, on the right hand side um and you know uh, all right you're going to say look it's obvious lewis isn't going to win this world, world championship but what he did say was look you know it might not be the golden goodbye to mercedes before i go to ferrari but we can still score podiums and win races uh, as a kind of golden goodbye as a well silver maybe goodbye uh, to mercedes before the end of the season as for george russell yet again he's out qualified uh, lewis hamilton so george really having a good season in comparison to his teammate lewis hamilton 11th on the grid Eesh. george russell much better seventh they have gone back to the old floor uh, that uh, they 
started the season uh, with in testing. Then they uh, introduced a few tweaks on on, on the floor uh, for. Uh, for, for the Saudi and Bahrain race, but they've decided that's not the route they want to go down, so they've gone to the old floor. Uh, nervous Q1, Lewis Hamilton only P12, am I through? Yes, you were, Russell was P6, but then didn't get better on from Lewis. From then on, the car was not under him. He got bumped out by Lance Stroll and Yuki Tsunoda. George Russell just scraped through in P10 and then was P7 at the end. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it seems like they're still in a bit of trouble with this car. Um, if you haven't seen what's going on with the Susie Wolf. Uh, legal action against the FIA and Lewis Hamilton's response to it. It's very interesting stuff. I don't actually have time uh, to go through it uh, now, but do go on uh, skysports.com uh, slash F1 and our Instagram uh, channels to see what Susie Wolf, the, the case that Susie Wolf is bringing against the FIA after the FIA, not by name, uh, implicated her in a, in a conflict of interest uh, allegations uh, earlier on in the year. Um, but she says that uh, they effectively did, and Lewis Hamilton's response as for transparency and accountability in Formula One in all regards. It's very interesting. I don't have time uh, to go into it right now, but uh, go and have a look if you haven't seen it already. And if you have seen it already, you'll know what I mean. Right, uh, let's do Ferrari, and then I think we might have to take a break. Uh, they're all looking for the race because it didn't work out for them today. Charles Leclerc was fifth, very difficult, letting in Lando Norris ahead of him. Uh, which is not good for Charles Leclerc, having been very, as I said at the top, very strong throughout the weekend, then it all fell away from Charles Leclerc in qualifying. Very difficult, to, very different and difficult car to drive today, but it was Carlos Sainz P2, and how, what a difference from two weeks ago, Sainz said after the radio, on the radio afterwards. So Sainz shares the front row with Max Verstappen. Sainz was P1 and Q1, then he's P1 and Q2, with uh, Leclerc Q P2 in Q2, and then they just let the door open for Max Verstappen to bang in there two tenths ahead of them. Um, they improved, but they could only stay two tenths behind Max Verstappen, and you can understand if they're a bit gutted here at Ferrari. Scrappy session for, for Charles Leclerc, abandoned his last lap because he wasn't improving, made a mistake at turn 12, and then they really need now to take some risks in the race, be aggressive, and see what is going to happen. With the tire graining, What's going on is that because it's cold, we've got the three softest tires in the range, and we are seeing a lot of graining on all compounds. Well, not really the hard, because they think it's, hope it's not going to happen. But certainly on the medium, it sort of scrapes across the track, if you haven't seen. And if you want to do your own little demonstration, and I've done this before, um, get a, uh, an eraser, uh, a pencil rubber, and then rub it on a nice white piece of paper. And imagine those are the little grains of rubber across the top of the tire surface. And if you run your finger satisfyingly uh, over that, that piece of paper with your with your rubber rubbings and then you can feel your finger skates across and loses grip doesn't have any grip uh, compared to if your finger was just on uh, on the piece of paper so that's exactly what's happening with graining tires and that graining tires is going to be an issue uh, in the race tomorrow and ferrari are hoping that they might be able to take advantage where others suffer but uh, red bull have certainly not been too shabby on tire graining so um, good luck to them with that and we'll finish i guess with one of my stars of the notebook for the first half with lando Norris P4, uh, Yuki's my other star of the notebook, but Lando P4 ahead of Charles Leclerc, Oscar Piastri P6. Uh, an average last lap, said Oscar, after being the faster McLaren driver for pretty much the whole of the weekend. Um, but uh, yeah, good old Lando. He said that was that's more like it. So Lando hasn't been on Oscar's pace all weekend. His problems have been traction out of slow, the slower corners and locking the rears under braking. Oscar was P4 in Q2, but then couldn't keep that momentum up. He couldn't improve in Q3, and Lando pipped him by two-tenths of a second. Lando said that is more like it. Oscar Piastri is handling the pressure uh, better than uh, last year. Are you just watch is Lando's dad, Adam, just watching a particularly interesting program, or are you listening to some music, or what? what's going on? Very exciting, I'm afraid. Oh, okay, no, nothing. <laughs> that was more like it from Lando, he said. Yes, that was great. Good. Ahead of a Ferrari. Ooh. Right, and on that, Adam Norris, I'll say uh, let's take a break. Uh, more notebook in a bit. Hi, uh, welcome back to the qualifying notebook from the 2024 Australian Grand Prix here in Melbourne, comma, Victoria, comma, Australia. Right, 
How have the paddock is emptying out? We're about uh, uh, 6 p.m. just after 6 p.m. local time. They're all disappearing into the Melbourne night. But I can tell you what happened in the rest of today's qualifying session, starting with a bit of a disappointed Aston Martin. Really, they've ended up ninth and tenth. I know this is kind of where they are. There is the distinctive bobble hat there of uh, Jess Hawkins uh, in the motorhome area. Um, but um, I mean, but they were both through Q1 and into Q2 and into Q3. But then Fernando Alonso had a wide moment. Uh, Lance had a big swap. Were on uh, a tank slapper on and turn 10 and lost some time. Bit disappointed with ninth and 10th. Maybe they could have made it up uh, a few places, but maybe not that many more. But uh, hey, at least they didn't go out uh, in Q2, which is more than you can say for Lewis Hamilton. Now, ex Aston Martin driver Sebastian Vettel might be doing Le Mans. And he has gone and found the car. Hello, Steve. He's gone and found the car in the, in the World Endurance Championship that has the number five. And he's basically said, you know, because he's red five, obviously, is Sebastian Vettel's number. Um, and he said, right, um, you know, how about it? So he's, uh, I think at the moment, or has already tested at Aragon, um, the Porsche, uh, the Porsche WEC car, the Le Mans car. It's the number five. It has three drivers at the moment, but he might, you know, boot one of them out if he wants to do Le Mans. And he's tested it. So wouldn't that be great? But I just like the way he like, you know, oh, look, there's a car number five in WEC. Let's see if I can uh, let's see if I can drive that. That would be good, but that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Uh, I've got a line about Fernando Alonso on his future, but maybe we'll do that in a future uh, notebook because uh, we've got the time. His family, Ricardo, on the way out. See you later, Tara. Um, but we'll talk about Daniel Rick uh, later. But uh, yeah, I think Alonso is probably holding out for any opportunities at Mercedes, Red Bull, uh, and Red Bull, rather than figuring out uh, whether he wants to continue with Aston Martin as a priority. The priorities are probably uh, other teams, but we. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Right, uh, Alpine. And there is Jack Doon, who's been doing those demonstrations with his dad, Mick. And uh, 17th for Gasly, and Ocon 15th. Well played, Esteban Ocon. Out of Q1 with this car, it's pretty good. And uh, after he hit the barrier in Q1, they changed his wheel, which is pretty easy, and sent it back out again. So into Q2, but couldn't better P15 in Q2. But we're getting there, he said on the message. And um, please don't make the joke that uh, whether uh, uh, this paddock guest is going to be quicker uh, on the simulator than the current Alpine car. Okay, don't make that joke, Lee, all right? Because it's not funny. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as for Pierre Gasly, uh, it was, he's been struggling with downshift issues, been struggling with various issues all weekend. And he was a good two tenths off getting in to Q2, but he was out in Q1 uh, and only 17th Pierre Gasly. But did you know this about Pierre Gasly? that he is an animal lover. I mean, I know, you know, we're all animal lovers. How could you not? But um, animals, uh, you know, better than us, aren't they? Um, in many ways. But he went to Taronga Zoo in uh, Sydney and um, was just had a great time. And then he had that usual thing when you go to zoos. It's like, well, you know, is this the right thing to do? Are the animals happy? And then did some research and knows that all the good things that zoos do with the conservation and, uh, all, you know, everything. Um, but uh, bought a uh, cuddly uh, koala toy and lots of cuddly sort of kangaroos take back. So I thought that was quite sweet um, that uh, Pierre Gasly uh, loves, is a big animal lover. Um, Michael Massey was here you know who Michael Massey is, I don't need to tell you, was here having, on the other day, uh, having a discussion, quite a long discussion, with the Alpine boss, Bruno Fama, uh, to which I will not add any comment. I'll just go, we'll see. If that, is, is there a job? Does he want to come back into Formula 1? Anyway, um, right, Williams, and what is going on? Today was a uh, Alex Alban P12. Logan Sargent has been withdrawn from the event. Um, you will probably, I don't, again, I don't have uh, all the time to go into uh, exactly why they chose why they chose to do what they did, but clearly they think that uh, even though there will be potential drawbacks with motivation or confidence or reputation of Logan Sargent and long-term drawbacks and the way people think it might not be the coolest thing to do, on balance, they feel it's the right thing to do, on balance. Uh, I agree with them. Um, Alex's, you know, past records and his ability and his experience shows that he is their best chance for points. That's just a fact. Um, but it is still tough to take uh, Logan Sargent's car away from him, send him home for the rest of the weekend. Although he's not been home, he's been here. I don't know whether he'll be here tomorrow. Uh, and uh, say thank you very much. Oh, look, there is Michael Massey uh, coming towards us, uh, Lee. Of course, he's here because uh, he is the uh, Australian uh, chief exec of uh, Australian uh, V8s uh, supercars. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, Alex did a great lap uh, through in P7, 
uh, in Q1 with a 17-1, tried his best in Q2, but lost time in the fast turn nine and turn 10 kink uh, with oversteer after hot tires. Didn't run again because he'd done all his laps, but uh, ended up a good two tenths off getting into Q3 with uh, the, uh, as they try to repair the chassis, which will be the repaired chassis from the crash, will be uh, one of the two race chassis for the Japanese Grand Prix in a couple of weeks time. And then, uh, they will try and get a third tub ready for the Chinese Grand Prix in uh, almost a month's time at the end of April. So that's the plan uh, for that. But there is big pressure, of course, on Alex Albon uh, to get a point. Uh, it would be gutting, wouldn't it, if uh, he has an accident again tomorrow or gets punted off by somebody or the whole thing is for nothing and doesn't score any points. But it would be victorious, celebratory and fantastic if Alex Albon uh, justifies and uh, uh, the, all the, the pain of taking Logan's car and sending, not allowing Logan to race if he could score a point. So hopefully for the sake, he will do that. Right, Yuki Tsunoda, he is my star with Lando Norris of qualifying because P8 today, Yuki Tsunoda, Daniel Ricciardo, P18. And, ah, uh, oh, what the crowd was gutted when Ricciardo was through into the top 10, but he got his 17... Point one. Sorry, he was through into, into Q2 in the top 10, but he got his 117.4 taken away from him because he exceeded track limits at turn five. The crowd booed, I can tell you, as I was watching from the pit lane. Yuki had a great Q2 and Q3. Uh, I enjoyed that, said Yuki. P8, just six one hundredths of a second behind George Russell in a Mercedes. So uh, while Ricardo was, uh, felt it was rubbing salt into the wound, uh, of being having his lap time deleted and not out of Q1, only 18 on the grid, Yuki Tsunoda was very happy about it. Now, do you want to try the Yuki Tsunoda breakfast? And if you do, uh, have it now or have it tomorrow, and I'll tell you what it is. Um, get some sourdough bread, toast some sourdough bread, uh, have some scrambled eggs on your sourdough, slice some avocado and put it on top of that, then crumble a bit of feta and uh, fry up some chorizo, uh, and put it onto there, and then put some spicy mayonnaise, some sriracha, is it sriracha, Lee? Sriracha, 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 sriracha. That is Yuki Sonoda's tip for your great Aussie breakfast. So try it at home and tell me what it's like. I might try it when I get back. Right, um, uh, I, I just got used to calling this team Steak F1, and then they come here and they're not called Steak F1 anymore, they're called Kick. So uh, let's... Let's just call them Sauber, ladies and gentlemen, shall we? If you wonder why I call them Sauber, that's the reason. Um, they change names from race to race. So Valtteri Bottas, 13th today. Zhou Guangyu, 19th. And nice one, Valtteri Bottas, into Q2, but couldn't come close to more than that. Two tenths behind Alex Albans Williams. Zhou Guangyu hoped to get out of Q1, but broke his front wing on a turn 10 curb and was out. Uh, so only 19th for Zhou Guangyu and 13th for Valtteri Bottas. Uh, their th cross-threaded wheel nut problems continue and they're hoping it won't recur, having happened in Saudi and in Bahrain, but they're not entirely sure because it's going to take a, a week or two uh, to uh, enact long-term solutions for those th cross-threaded problems that have cost them points in the first two races. And finally, we can do Haas F1. Nico Hülkenberg 16th, Kevin Magnussen 14th. It was quite a funny moment when Kevin Magnussen and was told by his engineer, right, that's out, sorry, we're out, sorry about that. And then Daniel Ricciardo got bumped out. He said, no, no, stay in the car. We're okay, we're back in, that's good. Uh, Hulkenberg missed out by two tenths due to the car not being quite right but he's 16th and Magnuson 14th. Right, join us tomorrow for 3 a.m. race on air and 4 a.m. lights out. But for now, goodbye. Sky Sports F1. Feel it all.